morning i hope you are all doing well today is the first video on my channel that is major diy like this is a big project for me and it's all because we're getting a new bed <laughs> i have never in my 46 years of being all right fair do since i moved out at 18 i'm 46 now and i have never in my life purchased a bed that I loved. It's just something I've never been that lucky with. It's like we go through beds every five years and it's it's just crazy. Honestly, it's just crazy. But we have bought an Emma. I've been doing a lot of research and I know there's loads of negatives and there's loads of positives, but we bought an Emma because, you know, two minutes in the store sitting on a bed is not enough for me. It's, I want to do an overnighter. I want to do an overnighter in dreams just to see what bed fits, and that is not reality. But if anyone else has struggled finding a bed of their dreams, let me know. And if you found the bed of your dreams, let me know what it is. Um, so we've purchased an Emma that comes in two days. This ended up snowballing everything. So instead of just getting a new bed, I'm doing the whole bedroom. The whole bedroom is getting a makeover, and I am beyond excited. My tastes have changed. We've had this bed from Ikea, for about six years, seven years, it's not the one. I'm not sleeping well, everything. It might be perimenopause, you know, I am 46, so it might be the fact that I am perimenopausal and sleep is bad and brain fog is bad and everything just leads on to one thing or another. So I figured, you know, process of elimination, let's get rid of the bed and get a new bed and get a new bed. And in the process of that, we will do the bedroom and we'll do it together because I'm gonna film the whole thing. We are doing paneling, um, five years late to the trend. You'll get used to that on this channel. There's definitely, if you're looking for the latest trends and the latest in interior design, don't follow me. Don't follow me, don't watch. <laughs> I'm always late to trends. I've had a shower, wash my hair. First step, B&Q, we're gonna go and get all the wood. I'm gonna finish my tea in my Halloween cup because that's the best cup there is. And um, yeah, it's nearly done. But um, B&Q, wood. Bedroom paneling. This is the first DIY video on my channel. <laughs> so I brought my list to be in queue. Guys, I need all of the things. I need everything from the wood to the glue to the primer. Pretty much the whole shebang to get this paneling done. Now, I did pick up some no more nails for the wood. Our walls are solid concrete. There's no nails getting in our walls. And I also picked up some of the quick polyfiller. Now, I picked up the five minute polyfiller super fast. <laughs> I know it says five minutes. It's meant to be fast, but it's fast guys. So, so fast. If your heart can handle it, this is the stuff you need. I also picked up some corking. I thought, you know, while I'm here, I'll get it all. I need the corking anyway for the paneling. And then I thought I might as well get some bathroom sealant. You know, my seal job around our bath is a bit shoddy. Then I saw the spray paint, 14 pounds. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Anyway, I used to get my cans for like six pounds back in the day. I also picked up some sugar soap. This was interesting. You have a ready to go. So like already diluted. They're both 500 mils, ready to use, spray on the wall for like four pounds 30. And then above this one, you've got the concentrated, which is also 500 mils, but you get like 10 times that amount when you dilute it yourself. So, you know, bargain, threw that in as well. And then <laughs> honestly, I couldn't stop. Actually, our banisters do need doing. It's on my list. I might as well get some paint stripper while I'm here. I did toy with getting, you know, the most toxic one. And then I thought actually, you know, with the puppy, I, I went eco. So I'm a bit nervous that the eco won't work, but we shall see. Now I do have a whole bag of old roller handles and all of those things and I do have some rollers somewhere in the attic but I bought some fresh ones because you know yeah I do wash my rollers out though and I try to keep them for as long as possible then I realized being cute I've got some really cool furniture but you know in your head you're walking around thinking I could make that myself I could do that myself <laughs> anyway it was time for the wood internal cladding Online B&Q sell a panelling kit. Well, this B&Q in Lakeside Essex does not sell those kits, which is a surprise to me because it's a massive B&Q. I decided to go down the traditional route of getting some MDF cut for me. I felt bad because at first he picked up like the eight, the six mil 
and he went to cut it and I was like, no, 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 I need the nine mil. So I've got this massive sheet. You can see the dimensions there. And I've just asked this um, B&Q cut man. <laughs> what, Claire? The guy that cuts the wood. <laughs> I asked him to cut as many 10 centimeter strips out of that one sheet of wood as is physically possible and bless him i know it's his job but i did feel bad because it took him ages it took the machine ages so the bed has arrived they don't assemble i didn't realize that um it's fine we can assemble a bed but it's actually a blessing in disguise because I haven't done the paneling yet <laughs> there's the bed part of me's like how on earth is that a super king bed um I guess that's, I guess we'll find out, right? That's the mattress, obviously. Um, but yeah, this is kind of a blessing in disguise. We're in the other room for a couple more nights anyway, because I know the Emma mattress needs like 48 hours before you sleep on it. So we've already set ourselves up in the other room and we're happy in there uh, for the duration of however long it takes, which means you see every cloud, guys, the universe always comes good. It means I can panel the wall, paint the wall, have it all ready before we put the bed up. Now, yeah, I have a normal video due out tonight for my YouTube channel, Claire's Crafty Corner, so I have to get that done first. Then, George, we can start on the panelling, bud. I know. George, George, do you want to help me move the bed over here? No, I, I didn't think. I didn't think so. So my biggest issue when I got all of these pieces of wood stood up is like, how many gaps do I want? This was way too many. So it was like, I was counting 10. I wanted them so much higher. And this is something to think about if you're doing paneling, how high do you want them? I really only wanted a small strip of wall above my paneling. So here we are. I kind of laid them out and I felt like 10 was too many. I took some away and I just had nine. And then I took more away and I just had eight. I really wanted this kind of really nice aesthetically pleasing gap so this is what i've ended up going with and i was so much happier so i have a dilemma now the boards aren't the exact length that i wanted them or needed them because you know measure twice cut once didn't measure twice, so. So I've got three options here. Option number one is the lazy route. We use these boards as is. As they were cut, we use them. We rest them on the lower plinth and they come this high. Now, I wanted it higher. It's really hard to show you without gluing it to the wall. I wanted it a lot higher than this. Um, even with one coming across the top, I wanted it higher. Now, the problem is, the light switch, the light switch, ah, oh, I hate it, this house is so old. If I rest it here and bring it up to the light switch, I haven't got enough room here for the cross plank. Now that means either A, cutting in to the cross plank, which will bug me, that's the lazy route, because that means I don't have to make a cut to a single board, I can just literally layer them, bang, 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 bang. That's option number one. Option number two is to trim these long boards. So every single board needing a trim by about yay much, about two inches. That's going to bring everything just below the light fixture. So the crossboard will sit just below the light fixture like this. I didn't really want this because I wanted it high. Now, to get it high, <laughs> I need to make more cuts. I've got plenty of wood. So to make it as high as I wanted it in the first place, I'm gonna have to cut leftover planks. I've got tons, tons and tons to play with. Cut an extra foot on each one to bring it over the light fixture and have it as high as I wanted it in the first place. My gut is telling me to do what I wanted in the first place. It's just the long way round. It means cutting this kind of 10, like foot, I need to cut 10 feet. So like 10 of these. I am not cut out for this. This is gonna be the funnest channel ever. Um, I made the cuts. I decided to go for the cuts because my heart, my heart was telling me I needed it high. This is what I've ended up with. I've cut, no, oh. <laughs> I've cut nine I've cut nine short little bits that are going to go along the bottom 
and then the tall ones are going to sit on top. Um, so this is the join. Hopefully once filled and everything looks good, it will be fine. This is the corner join um, and it sits well and truly over the light switch, which is great because it's closer to the ceiling. It won't give me so much space above. I'm happy. I'm so happy. Why am I so out of breath? To cut this many pieces of wood, you'd think it wouldn't be that hard, but I didn't use my tools. I didn't use my electric power tools. I just used my block, my cutting block. Um, and yeah, my arm is killing okay my biggest dilemma now is do i want 10 across so right now this is 10 downs so this is now eight i've taken two away my heart is telling me go with the wider gaps i think that's probably what i'll do obviously this will be done by the time the video goes out so it's just guys this is what i need you here with me in my room yes i think eight is the one the hardest thing about panelling is the maths, guys. The maths was not mathing. I struggled. I thought I was, I was like, I was feeling really not cocky. Maybe I was cocky. Was I cocky? Maybe I was. I was like, this is easy. I'll just work out the space on my wall. I'll, you know, subtract all of the planks, which are like 10 centimetres each. I'll work out the gaps and I'll do it that way. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> I had to cut it out. It was an hour. It was an hour of me moving each plank. Well, that's not right. That's not right. That's, by the time I got to the end, the gap was tiny. I was like, what is going on? I don't know why I got overly confident thinking I could work this out by myself, but absolutely not. YouTube came to the rescue and I will actually link in the description box how you work out the gaps, how you work it out mathematically. I found a channel, Fab and L. I just typed in how to work out paneling gaps. Fab and L, I think that's their channel name. They came up and, and honestly, L, she was the easiest person. I could understand exactly what she was saying, so I just took their method. Anyway, back to it. I am actually putting my No More Nails adhesive on the planks in a zigzag pattern. This is highly recommended. Don't just do straight lines because your planks will then fall straight off the wall. So zigzag those babies up to get them to stick to your wall. Now you can already see I've put the shorter ones on and I'm using a method called slap and whack. That's, <laughs> that's the only way I can describe it. I want these planks solidly adhered to my wall. So when I've got them kind of in the position that I want, I rest them on the bottom 10 cent, the, the foot long ones. I rest them on there and then I just slap it, like whack it against the wall, give it a good old bash, a good old thump. And um, I was just hoping that they would stay up and it did the job. Once I got my gaps all sorted out with that maths, oh, why? You know, I hated maths in school. Anyway, we do need it, guys. But do we? Because we've got YouTube. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, I put the cross section across the top and I'm absolutely loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. It's dark at this point. George is tired. I'm tired. This is the next day. It is time to fill all of these gaps. Now, I am using that polyfiller five minute polyfiller guys <laughs> if you are part of my other channel if you've ever seen any of my other videos you know you know I work with some products that cure quite quickly this stuff literally cures in five minutes I know that's what it says on the tin okay I know but I wasn't prepared I, I just feel like I was doing it for the convenience of being able to sand it back real quick prime wheel real quick but if your heart <laughs> If your heart can't cope with the speed of things curing, this polyfiller is not for you. It's not for you. It was literally curing in my hands. But all of those gaps, so where you see those footlongs at the bottom, those got fills. All of the gaps between all of the wood, wherever wood met wood, I was filling it with polyfiller. Now, I also got this cute little dinky tool in b &Q. It is a set of two, and I was using this for the cork. So once I've filled all of my gaps where all of the wood meets all of the wood, it's time to cork in between the wood and the wall. So you use polyfiller for the wood, cork for between the wood and the wall. This is going to give you a really nice, neat finish if you do it properly and your name's not Claire. But no one's going to know because I'm not zooming in on that I'm just not gonna do it okay that is done 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 apart from sanding sanding I am putting off because it's not my favorite thing it's not my favorite thing to do at all gosh guys the mess was 
real. So the corking has gone in between the wood and the wall all the way around, all the way at the tops and all at the bottoms as well, just completely sealing everything against the wall. This is the next day after attaching everything to the wall. The top, I'm not sure. Are we doing tops, guys? <laughs> Are we doing tops? I'm way too short for it. I'd need to get the ladder out. But I always, I also feel like as soon as I've painted everything, everything's done and dusted and the, the wall is getting painted as well, I feel like that's just going to naturally seal that. Is that, mm, am I just lazy? Yeah, I'm lazy. I have to say, it's not something I would rush to do again, even though I am. <laughs> I'm doing it again in my hallway downstairs, um, which was the original plan. But yes, I'm super proud. The mess was real. I'm going to wait for everything to dry on this drop sheet, and then I can just flake it off and hoover it up. The poly filler is already dry. Um, that is a super fast poly filler. Like it, I cannot get over how quickly it dries. Almost too fast. So if you're kind of like a hobbyist like myself, then it might be a, it might be just too fast a, a curing time. But anyway, um, that is all. Yes, I'm gonna leave this to dry now. And the next step is sanding. I actually didn't film the sanding process, guys, because my soul had broken at this point. I was gone. <laughs> I wanted this project over and done with like who does this this is the color we ended up going with these are actually French chic tester pots tester sachets um so I got a load of French chic tester sachets and I got them color matched at Valspar B&Q now the color we ended up going with was salt of the earth I actually put a poll out on my Instagram over at Claire's at home Claire's at home Claire, Claire at home um and honestly the, the the results were varied everyone had lots of different kind of opinions there is a few beautiful colors here I wanted like a natural very very neutral organic kind of color now so many of you loved um stone in love but actually we've already got the whole of our house downstairs the hallway up the stairs it's actually a colour called Perfectly Taupe by Dulux and that's identical to Stone in Love by French Chic Paint and like way cheaper. So I didn't want to just carry that colour up but anyway we went with Salt of the Earth colour matched at Valspar. There you saw me just using the primer. I was into mine's about priming the MDF but yeah the sales assistant at B&Q did recommend I get this specific MDF primer. Does the job so now I've laid out all my tools. I am ready to paint these walls. This is the colour. It is beautiful like a it, it looks lighter in the in the tub it goes a lot darker than what you see there it's like a what is it like a latte mocha chocka <laughs> it's like a really lovely coffee color and it's so calming so so beautiful and I must admit this is the one color that me and my hubby did agree on he he doesn't like the, the color choice I've made for the rest of the room but he trusts me he just lets me get on with it I'm not gonna lie I'm the one that kind of does all the DIY. So I used my small brush and my mini roller to paint the, the long straights of the wood. And then I was just using my fat roller in the middle. Now I've been painting since I was 17, 18. I got my first place on my own. And honestly, I'm no professional painter, but all I know is that you really want to load your roller up. You don't want it pouring and dripping everywhere, but you really want the paint to get into those fibers on your roller so that you've got a really generous coat. What you don't want to do is go over the same place over and over and over. So I just go here, you can see down, up, down, up and done. Like I'm leaving it there. I'm not going over and over and over. If you paint in exactly the same spot, you know, like roll 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 what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take that paint back off of the wall listen all of those years <laughs> all of those years of watching like changing rooms on tv oh guys it has been years of love for DIY and just painting and I'm not so much into wallpapering if I'm honest but this colour anyway it is beautiful so here you see me now it's a bit closer for you I'm just using my little diddy brush to get 
in to those right degree angles that the paneling has created, that's where your corking goes. And this is why we use the cork because it's gonna give us this gorgeous, gorgeous finish in those areas. Once I've gone in and around with my little brush and got all of those inner edges, that's when I use my wider roller, my thinner roller, beg your pardon, my thinner roller just to get the uprights. You see here, again, up, down, up and done. You don't want to faff. You don't want to roll over and roll over and roll over. You will start to take that paint off the wall. So again, I've only been painting, what am I, guys, for like 27 years of doing my own painting. I'm not a professional. This is just what I've picked up from watching too many interior design shows when I was younger. But I absolutely love this colour. It is exactly what I envisaged, envisaged, envisaged in my mind. It's calming, it's neutral, it's so beautiful. This is what it's looking like at different times of the day and it was just a case of waiting for this to completely dry before I went in with the second coat and assembled the bed. This bed is huge. <laughs> Our room, our room is nowhere near big enough for this bed. But really, what are you doing? You're just sleeping. That's it. You might as well just get the biggest bed that your room can afford. This is the colour I was thinking of going with, Haunted Abbey, but it all changed. Guys, I love it so much. I actually love it so, so much. Um, I could not be happier with the way this has turned out. Now, I've got a couple of things here just to run through. I've got my receipt from B&Q. Now this wood total, this whole sheet of wood cost me 27 pounds. Now I've still got four of these long pieces left. I've still got four and I've still got about seven smaller offcuts. So for 27 pounds, this is what this whole wall has cost me in the wood. Now bear in mind, I, you do have to pay for cuts in B&Q. So I think the first 10 cuts are free or something like that. First 10 or 20, don't quote me. So for the additional cuts, it was five pounds. It's 50 pence a cut. So just in case you are thinking about it, it's 50 pence a cut. And the extra cutting cost me an additional five pounds. So 32 pounds total for the wood for this wall. And I'm sorry, bargain, absolute bargain. Now this is the colour, the original colour was from French Chic Paint, that was Salt of the Earth. So like I've done in the past, I've taken this into b &Q, and they have a machine and they put the machine down on the paint and the machine comes up with all of the colours that it takes to create this. Now he could not get a colour match within 0.02, so this came out at 0.025 colour match, so not bang on 100%. So always bear that in mind as well if you are thinking of getting a colour match. Now the machine Dean also told him that they have similar colours in stock, which is really cool, right? The technology is amazing. So he then went and got some colour swatches and brought them over. And I said, oh, they don't really look anything like this. And actually they were 0.2. So not 0.0, like this one. They were 0.2 within the match. And I said, I'd rather go for this one, which is a lot closer to the shade that I wanted in the first place. So that is something to bear in mind. You might be lucky and get a bang on 100% colour match. But for me, that was not the case. But I think this is pretty much, I can't tell. <laughs> I can't tell the difference, really. Bearing in mind, this is on paper and not on a wall. And this is two coats. And this is just a tester. So I'm really, really happy with the way it came out. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. Our super king bed is a game changer. I sleep this side. I pretty much sleep like a starfish. Tim sleeps this side and he sleeps like, I can only describe it as like Dracula in a coffin. Like <laughs> as soon as he's gone to sleep, he stays. He stays. Who does that? Who does that? He stays in his spot all night long, which gives me the rest of the bed to actually spread out and let all limbs spread out. George sleeps right here in between both of us and it's worked out. It's worked out. I honestly thought it doesn't matter what size bed we get, George is still going to want to lean up against us, lay on our heads, lay across our necks. But he is kind of just learning now that he's safe and he can stay between both of us. And I'm getting, I'm getting good sleep right now. Really good sleep. The next step for this room is to paint above the paneling and the rest of the room. Now, when I shared this photo of this room on my Instagram, so many said to go with this khaki colour. 
I don't know what's happening. I feel like khaki's taken over my life accidentally. Like my nails went khaki, then I ordered a khaki shirt and pillows and now the wall. So we have decided to go with a gorgeous, gorgeous, almost zen dark green. Um, and the decision has been made that that is definitely what we're going with. We haven't yet chosen a colour, but I am loving that Haunted Abbey that you saw earlier in the clip. I'm in love with that. So I'm going to go and find some similar shades. But for me, it's all about the name. The name Haunted Abbey it's right up our street so the chances are i'll probably go with that hope you've enjoyed this i hope you found it helpful uh, any information just ask in the comment section down below and yeah i'm i'm truly truly 